Uno, dos, one, two, tres, cuatro. Well, good morning, everybody. This is Francisco Cervent. It's nice to be back. This is Rethink Your Legacy, and I am your estate planning attorney, or I hope to be one day if it uh, if it makes sense and you need to get this done. Hailing all the way over from Keystone Law Firm. We're a boutique firm in Chandler, Arizona, and we help clients all over the state of Arizona. We actually help clients all uh, nationwide if they have any kind of issue related here uh, in the state of Arizona. Um, and we help people protect their assets, protect their family. We help people go through probate when they didn't do that, unfortunately. Uh, we have a division that does all kinds of probate work and probate litigation. So if you need help with any of that stuff, this is the phone number to call. You might want to jot it down, save it for later. 480-750-7788. And today we're going to cover something that I haven't covered from this perspective before. So I, I hope it's I hope it's useful. I think where a lot of you, uh, so I have this, I, I truly believe from the bottom of my heart, it, in my experience, it is the best, the best way to arrange your affairs is to create a living trust and to not use only a will. A will goes through probate and we've just seen how many times when somebody had a will, they ended up spending $100,000 in probate fees. So we we just avoid that altogether. We recommend using a living trust even for simple, simple, simple families. Uh, it's no harder to set up. It's no more expensive to set up. It's just the preferred way to do it in Arizona. So for everybody who has that or who is setting that up or whatever, um, you may not have the issue we're going to talk about today immediately, but it will come up after the fact, after you pass away. What we're going to talk about today is irrevocable trusts. So we get a ton of questions about this. We run into these. We set them up for our clients when necessary. Uh, they get created most of the time. Um, I would say like just pure numbers, like how many, you know, end up getting created after somebody has died. That's where we see most of them are created. Uh, though there are still a bunch that get created while we're alive. And an irrevocable trust, the big difference is that once you set it up, it is irrevocable, which might mean in some aspects you can't change it. Um, but what I want to cover today with you guys, I sort of want to give you guys a little peek behind the curtain as to how us lawyers actually do change your revocable trust when we need to. There are some ways to do it. There are some times where you need to do it. Sometimes you just want to do it. And so I'm going to peel the curtain back and give you guys a sneak peek into the world of amending a irrevocable trust. It's kind of cool that we can do this. And when I first started as a lawyer, I don't know, the thought of an irrevocable trust, it was just at first confusing. I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> but um, you learn what they are and kind of get used to them. And same thing for, um, you know, regular kind of uh, foundational estate planning with all the living trust and power of attorneys and all those things. Um, just like any of you, right? You're all, you're all working or retired and you know, when you first start your job, it's all confusion from day one and you just get used to it and you learn things as you go. <clears throat> so as I learned about irrevocable trust, I learned, holy cow, there's so many different types of irrevocable trust. I mean, they're just, there's almost an infinite number of different types of them because you can use them for so many different things. It just it, it like, I don't know. And I continue. I mean, I've been doing this almost 15 years. I continue to learn, oh, there's a new way to, we could use it. Oh, look, we could do it for, I mean, you just, we just create new things. It's, you know, we get to use our creativity as lawyers. And when you, you know, when you know what you're doing, you have the, the ability to do that. So I want to give you some ideas of what are some of the uh, most common irrevocable trusts that I think mo that, that I think affect 
the biggest number of people. And so here's who should consider an irrevocable trust of one type or another. The first one that comes to mind for me, because we do these a lot, is to protect your assets from nursing home, okay? Um, it's a big it's a big fear, it's a big risk, it's a big financial drain, right? Healthcare costs are the number one expense in um, in retirement. It just, I mean, forget it, right? If you if something big happens, it's just the thing that's going to drain you and end you, you know, put you into the uh, poorhouse, uh, end up being broke, end up being dependent on your kids. It's just healthcare costs are the thing. So you can put your assets into an irrevocable trust, and from that irrevocable trust, you can qualify for Arizona. Uh, benefits to pay for those medical expenses. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Wham, bam. Now you have coverage through Arizona's Medicaid program. Okay, that's one type that's pretty common. Another type that we use a lot is a gifting trust. Uh, A lot of our clients, they want to make gifts to their family, to uh, maybe charities while they're alive. They want to, you know, they don't want to wait to the inheritance, you know, to pass after they're dead when they can't see people enjoy it. So they're making gifts now. Cool. Awesome. We love it. And yep, I'm a total fan of that. I think it is a, you know, my wife and I, we, we, our kids are still young. So our plan is different right now than what it will be when they're a little older. Right now, everything is, would just be there to take care of them, you know, because they're young. But when they're older, I think our goals will shift because they're going to, you know, be independent. We're not going to be supporting them. And so they're not going to be relying on any money coming from us. Uh, I think we will do much more of this lifetime gifting. And if you give things just to people directly, then that's, you know, nothing wrong with that, but you could potentially lose some tax advantages and some asset protection advantages. And so people use a gifting trust. They give it to the trust and the trust is there for the beneficiary, for your kids or whoever. And that gifting trust can be irrevocable to capture some extra advantages and strategies there. Um, You might also use an irrevocable trust as a asset protection tool, just general asset protection from liability, you know, car accident, um, somebody sues you in your business. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's right a million ways that we could end up getting sued this day and age. I looked it up. uh, When was it? Probably at the beginning of the year, the number of lawsuits filed in Arizona Every year, I don't remember what it was. I, would, I want to say it was like 50,000 lawsuits. I mean, it's just crazy, right? 50,000 lawsuits every year. I don't know. It, it might have been a different number, but that's what I'm remembering right now. Um, so you can have an, uh, an irrevocable trust that protects your assets. And then, bam, you know, you, you can't, can't lose those if you get sued. Uh, you got to do it beforehand. You can't do it after, right, <laughs> after the accident. You can't go buy car insurance after the accident. You have to set up an irrevocable trust before the liability happens. Um, and then there's some tax strategy trusts. So um, there's there's a whole bunch of these. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I don't know how many, but there's a bunch of these kinds where you are taking advantage of the ability to put it into an irrevocable trust instead of you know, giving it to charity or instead of giving it to a beneficiary or, or instead of giving it to your spouse. Uh, and by putting it in this special purpose trust, you take advantage of some tax law. Like right now, with these pending tax law changes coming from uh, the federal government, we're setting up for our clients a bunch of these types of trusts to take advantage of the good, favorable tax laws right now so that they're grandfathered in when the law changes. Okay, lots of irrevocable trust things. We are... Uh, what I what I put together for today's show, because it's always more than I can cover, and you you might just want to refer back to this. I actually wrote an article. I have an article for you on <laughs> all this lovely stuff about irrevocable trusts. So mostly this article focuses on how to modify an irrevocable trust. So if you have one, if you 
uh, had a spouse pass away, you probably do have one that you maybe or may not know it's irrevocable, so be careful there. Um, or if you are leaving an inheritance to someone, then those are circumstances where an irrevocable trust will come in and affect your life, then you want to get this article. You want to grab it, and you just go to the same website every week. It's radio.keystonelawfirm.com. You can go open your phone, po- punch that into your browser to Safari or Chrome or Google, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. And enter your name and email. The system will send it right over to you, and you'll have that article. Tuck it away. Review that with your family. If you need help, if you've got an irrevocable trust and you just like, I don't know what to do with this. I need to figure out how to live with this thing. Give us a call. That's what we're here for. The first appointment is free. So just call 480-750-7788. Uh, After the break, we're going to touch on why you might need to make changes to an irrevocable trust. Be back in a minute. Welcome back to Rethink Your Legacy. Good morning, guys. This is Francisco Servent, your attorney, your problem solver at law. And if you're just joining us, welcome. I am happy to be here this morning with you. Uh, You know, one of the things that's tough about doing the radio show is we started this last year uh, right in the middle of covid at, you know, the in the thick of the shutdown. And the hard part for me is that I have always done public speaking with a live audience. And so here I am speaking to the wall, <laughs> speaking to nobody. So it's kind of, it, it, you know, I wonder sometimes, are you really listening? Is anybody out there? So my, the way I I get the feedback. The way I sort of feed my ego, haha, is to ask you if this information is relevant. And if you want more information by going to the website, that's part of the reason why I have that. So I kind of know, am I talking about stuff that's interesting to you guys? Am I hitting on the right things? Are these things you care about? Um, The website is radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Today I'm giving you an article on uh, irrevocable trust and how to modify them. Uh, super nuanced topic. I usually don't go this kind of nerdy into the legalese of stuff, but I just, I really do love irrevocable trusts and we use them a lot. And I know that, that it, you know, one of the big misconceptions we get from our clients is, Oh, I don't want to do that. I can't ever make changes to it. Ha ha ha. You know, us lawyers have figured out all the back doors of how to actually make changes to an irrevocable trust. So it's kind of nice because you can, in a lot of cases, you can have your cake and eat it too. You get the advantages of the irrevocable trust with the benefits of being able to still make changes. And so there you go. So anyway, so that's why I'm talking about this today. But if you are interested in this topic, if this is a a helpful topic for you, what I ask you to do is jump over to the website, radio.keystonelawfirm.com, download the article, and that helps me know, yeah, okay, this is something interesting. If it's not, then don't do it, and I will skip this topic in the future. If you need help with an irrevocable trust that you already are dealing with, and you might have one because your spouse died and uh, you had a joint trust together, in that circumstance, a lot of those joint trusts, they give the surviving spouse a partially irrevocable trust. Are you managing it correctly? Did you do the things you need to do correctly? If you want to make changes... These are the, that's what we're going to talk about today is how to make changes to a trust like that. So that's one circumstance where you may have an irrevocable trust is if you're a widow or a widower. The other time is if you, if you just set an irrevocable trust up for yourself or your beneficiaries, we see that happen a lot because you have some tax strategy, you have some asset protection strategies, whatever, and you're thinking, how do I make changes to this thing? Oh my gosh, or how do I get out of it? You know, we I talked to a gal the other day who um, had an irrevocable trust. The firm that set it up for her really didn't educate them on all the ins and outs of it, 
And as she was living with it for a year or two, she's like, this sucks. I don't want this thing anymore. I want to get out of it. So maybe that's you. Maybe you need to get out of it and you need to figure out how to do that. It's not as simple as just, you know, poof, it's done. So you got to take the right steps. Um, or maybe you had a parent pass away, left you an inheritance, and they left it in a trust that continues, you know, that continues. That's not just dumping out money and, and, and it's closed up. It's it's continuing on. It's holding on to the assets you may have in your revocable trust from them. Uh, in those cases, then that's then you've got an irrevocable trust and you may need to make changes. You may want to make changes to it. Why? Why would you ever want to make changes to an irrevocable trust? You. So I'm going to go through all the reasons here. You can get it in the article uh, so you don't even have to write it all down. Go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com and enter your name and email. The system will fire it off to you. It's like a three-page article. It's got some good summaries, good details, so that you can capture this information, save it for later. Um, you, I don't know. I mean, there's there's lots and lots of reasons why you might want to change in your revocable trust. A couple of the big ones, okay, is if you want to change the beneficiaries, you can actually do that on an irrevocable trust. Not on every type of irrevocable trust, but on lots of different types you can, where you set it up, initially set it up, and it's got, say, it's got your kids equally as beneficiaries. Well, say, you know, trucking along, life happens, and one of them, I don't know, one of them just uh, uh, goes off the rails, and, and maybe, you know, they're they end up in prison or something. I don't know. I'm making an extreme example to make it clear, right? At that point, you might think, holy crap, I, I do not want any money going to that child. Okay. But the trust is irrevocable. Hmm. Okay. But that's a, that's a circumstance. You might want to do that. Or you had a beneficiary where the flip happened, right? Where you initially did not include them. We've had a number of clients who were estranged from a child, an adult child, for one reason or another, it happens, and when they set up their trust, they did not include that child as as a beneficiary. And that's, you know, it happens more often than people might think. So then life trucks along, years go by, and we actually get these phone calls where, hey, you know, we've re-established the relationship we now want to include them in our estate plan. Awesome. We can do that. If it's set up as an irrevocable trust, then you may want to modify that and you can. Okay. So that's another circumstance. Uh, You might need to move. If you have an irrevocable trust, maybe you set it up for asset protection or for nursing home protection, but you have to move to another state. You know, maybe you're moving back to be closer to family. Um, or maybe you're moving, uh, because, uh, that's, I don't know, that's kind of the biggest reason, uh, in that phase of life is you need to be closer to family. And so let's say that's what's happening, but you've got this irrevocable trust that's protecting your assets from, you know, nursing home cost, but it's set up under Arizona law or it's set up under Minnesota law and you're moving to Arizona. What do you do? Holy cow. Well, you need to amend that trust to establish it under the new jurisdiction. Ugh. Um, <clears throat> Or maybe you have a beneficiary who later becomes disabled and needs to qualify for government benefits, for benefits, for disability benefits, and all techs and things like that, that that provide a lot of good case management and support. Yeah, if you have an irrevocable trust, you want to amend that so it doesn't screw up their benefits and end up wasting all that money in the trust. Yeah, Uh, we had one where... This was one of those that had uh, a trust that had been set up by a great grandparent, and uh, this was called a dynasty trust. So it continues from generation to generation, and the the w- the best thing that happens in those is that the beneficiary actually doesn't even use it. Right when the beneficiary gets the inheritance inside this dynasty trust, but doesn't need it because they're working themselves, they're supporting themselves, they're saving for their retirement, and they're like, I, I just don't need it. Like, sure, it's great, it's there as a nest egg, but I don't need it. And so it continues to just grow and be invested and grow and be invested. That's really great. Um, but what happens when 
that beneficiary. So it, it, it happens that sometimes the beneficiary who won't ever use it wants to get it down to the next generation because they do need it. Maybe they're going to college or whatever, right? Aha. So that's a circumstance where you may need to amend it to get it to the next generation. Uh, and then there's about five other times when you might need to amend in your vocal trust. So go get the article. It's at radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Uh, you can download it. Just enter your name and email so the system can send it uh, right to you. File it away in your email, and there it will stay for you for later. Uh, if you need help with your irrevocable trust or you want to talk about setting one up, maybe you want to protect your assets from nursing home, maybe you want to protect your assets from liabilities, maybe you want to make some type of strategic gifts to your beneficiaries um, and get some tax advantages out of it, all kinds of possibilities there, then give us a call, go to, um, or send us a text, give us a call or send us a text, and the phone number is 480-750-7788. I know it's Sunday morning, I know it's early, but you actually are allowed. I give you permission to jump on your phone and call or dial that number, um, or I mean text that number, 480-750-7788. 7788 and just say, I think I need some help with an irrevocable trust. And my team will call you back first thing Monday morning and they'll help set up your first appointment. It is free. There's no catch. It's just to fig- you know, figure out what's going on. Just a quick discovery call. What do you need help with? And then point you in the direction of some resources. And, um, and that's it. So if you need help with that, give us a call or send us a text 480-750-7788. Um, and then again, the article, it's over at radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Be happy to help. Uh, after the break, I'm going to pick up and we're going to dig in. We're going to get even a little more nerdy. I know it's a super nerdy morning. Uh, and we're going to talk about how to amend the trust. There's three, an irrevocable trust. There's a few ways to do it and we'll cover them after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Rethink Your Legacy. Uh, this show is intended to help us. I, I, I talk a lot about estate planning strategies and techniques today. It's about irrevocable trusts, but really this is all aimed at helping us live every day in a way that is not, you know, that we don't forget that this all, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. We got to know, do like take the action today on what is important to you. So I'm trying to give you the tools so you know what that action is. You know, the worst thing we can do is not take that step forward. So for those of you who have an irrevocable trust or who are considering one, have wondered if you need one, uh, maybe you set one up and you're like, why did I do that? (laughs) Uh, then this is for you because I'm talking now I'm going to dig into how to change an irrevocable trust. Yeah, you can, it's totally changeable and there's different ways. There's, there's sort of the hardest way to change it. There's all the way down to the easiest way to make changes, right? There's that big spectrum, but that's the, that's the advantage of knowing what your options are is that there are multiple options here. So we, there's, uh, okay, well, well, I guess let me just go straight into my notes. An irrevocable trust by its nature isn't, doesn't mean that it's, it's a hundred percent set in stone. It means that in the stone that is chiseled there, right in that irrevocable trust, it will say how you can make changes, Okay, that's the nature of, of an irrevocable trust. Now, on the flip side, a revocable trust, which is the common thing that's the foundation of every estate plan, that one you can make changes just by signing an amendment, right? You don't even, like, there's no complexity to it. There's no sophistication to it. There's no uh, limitations to it. It's revocable. You can do whatever you want. You can make any changes you want. On an irrevocable trust, though, it will lay out specifically what 
you need to do to make changes and what your options are to make changes. Sometimes you can't change everything and generally you don't care to change everything, but you will want to reserve the power to change a few things. So in an irrevocable trust, how, what are these typical methods? Okay. The one that has been around forever and doesn't even have to be mentioned in the irrevocable trust itself. This is sort of the, the, the last resort option. And we've had to use this many times and it works. It's still available. It just is sort of the last resort simply because it is the most complicated one to use. And in Arizona, this is a process where we actually go and ask the court to amend the trust or to approve an amendment to the trust. That's really what we're doing. So what does that mean? It's judicial reformation, okay? We're, we're going to the court. There's a statute in Arizona's trust code that says the court has the power to do it, to do that. So you have an irrevocable trust, and for some reason, you're just like, oh my gosh, you talk to an attorney or you talk to a CPA, and wow, we need to make we need to make a trust change here. Um, there's just you know no ifs, ands, or buts. And so what you do is you work with an attorney to file a petition. You're kind of filing a lawsuit in court, saying, Your Honor, we've got an irrevocable trust, and here's all the things that we that you need to know about it. That and here's the reasons why we need to make the change that we're proposing. Here's the proposed change. Here's the law that supports what we're requesting. That the court has the authority to do this. Blah 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 blah. Then the judge will require that you actually give notice to all the other people who are affected by that change or might be affected by that change. People that are named in the trust, etc. And then you're going to have a court date, and then you might have a hearing. You might have a little lawsuit over it. <coughs> And that's it. You know, if you get to the end of it and the judge agrees, yep, I want to make, I mean, essentially you're kind of asking the judge to agree, do you want this change to happen? Is you going to have to sell it to him? Then uh, the, the, the judge can say yes. And the judge agrees, signs off on it and poof, that's it. So there's got to be a reason for it. You know, you don't want to have to do this method. It is the hardest because it can turn into a lawsuit. If some of the other beneficiaries don't want that change to happen, bleh, you don't want to have to go this route unless you're forced. This is the last resort option for how to change an irrevocable trust. Okay, so if you want to get the article on this, go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com. And if this is at all interesting to you, like I said earlier, it's hard for me to know if you guys are even listening. So, yeah. If this is interesting, go grab it. Let me know. Um, or send me an email, radio at keystonelawfirm.com. What do you want to talk about? What do you want me to talk about? I'm happy to talk about whatever it is. We've had some big, big um, interest in the last couple topics, and so I just want to make sure this is still good for you guys. So anyway, go get it, radio.keystonelawfirm.com, uh, and, and you can see all the details on the article here about modif modifying an irrevocable trust. So that's the first way. It's the first and the worst. Honestly, if you can avoid that, let's just avoid it. The second way is, um, well, there's, there's three more ways. The second way is probably what I think is going to become, this is the way to say it, it's going to become the new industry norm. I think this will become the new industry norm. It's going to take some time for it to catch on, but I think it's going to become the new industry norm. And I think it's going to become the best way to do it. It's using a trust protector. So inside of your irrevocable trust, you would build, you would have this language, these paragraphs, sometimes it's multiple pages that says, what a trust protector is and what they can do. Generally, what they're what you give them the power to do is the power to make changes for circumstances when you would want them. So you would have to say, I want this change to happen, and your trust protector has the ability to do that. Sometimes you name your attorney as a trust protector. Sometimes you have your attorney uh, have the power to designate who the trust protector will be, but then you don't have to go to court you don't have to get your beneficiary's permission, and you just have a trust protector who you consult with, and they make the change. And then, boom, it's super easy, right? I think that's going to become the new industry norm. <clears throat> There's two other ways that are 
also available that I, I I'm not <clears throat> sorry my throat my throat is kind of bothering me. Um, there's two other ways that are useful. They're options, but they have disadvantages. The first one is called decanting. So decanting is kind of new-ish under Arizona law. hasn't been around that long. What it is is it's a uh, it's a way for the trustee to, of the irrevocable trust to draft or have somebody draft a whole brand new irrevocable trust and move all the assets from the old one to the new one. Um, and that's that's a, in essence that's what it is, right? There's not much more to it. The Arizona allows them to do that. It has to still accomplish the same purpose that was originally set up as the first irrevocable trust, but then they do it. They move it all into a new trust, and then they're operating under the new trust. What is unclear under Arizona law is what are all of the ways that they need to make sure they satisfy the their duties to all the beneficiaries. Do they need to notify the beneficiaries? How much do they need to notify them? Are there tax consequences of doing this, of making the transfer from one trust to the next trust because it's going to be a new tax ID number? Lots of unclear questions that don't yet have really solid answers, but that's another way. And then the most informal way, which works sometimes, it's okay sometimes, is to just do a non-judicial modification. And this is essentially an intra-family agreement to modify the trust. That's it. You all get together. You say, hey, we've got an irrevocable trust that says ABC. We all agree it should be changed to XYZ. You all sign off on the new document, and that's it. So those are the ways to do it, I guess. I mean, hopefully that's helpful. So, But I give you some more details in the article. So jump over to radio.keystonelawfirm.com and download that article. If you want to set up an irrevocable trust, if you want to modify an irrevocable trust, if you just need a consultation on this, you just want some advice, then call our office. That's what we're here when we work one-on-one with clients, 480-750-7788. You can call, and right now if you call, you'll leave a message with your name and your phone number so you can get us to call you back Monday morning. Or right now, you can just pop open your cell phone, your text messaging app, type in the phone number, right, 480-750-7788. Say, I think I need some help with a irrevocable trust, or I need some help with my trust, or whatever, and my team will follow up with you first thing Monday. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> you, you're you okay, you're in good company if you call it irrevocable uh, I just chose early on to call it irrevocable because I, I don't know, I can't stand the other way. That's fine. <laughs> I just, it's my style. All right, so we'll, after the break, um, I've got a couple of the cases that actually support everything here that I think you guys will find interesting. We'll talk about those in just a minute. Good morning. Welcome back to Rethink Your Legacy, everybody. This is Francisco Servent, your attorney and problem solver at law. Look forward to speaking with any of you if you need help with an irrevocable trust. That is our topic for today. Just call our office or send a text message. You can do that right now. Don't wait for the right time. Don't wait for the perfect time. Don't wait until you have all the answers before you reach out for help. If you are not going to spend... um, you know, the next part of your life going to law school, studying for the bar, and then getting 10 years of experience, you can use the investment that I've made uh, in myself and in my team and the people that I've hired and who work with Keystone Law Firm uh, to just take the shortcut, call us, and get help. 480-750-7788. Or you can send a text message, 480-750-7788, and let us help you brainstorm the issue. Don't don't try to do it alone. Uh, these are things that can make a massive difference in your life to your loved ones, uh, to the people we care about. Um, the show is called Rethink Your Legacy because of because I don't want us to miss out on one day of our life. I don't want one day to go by. Sunday's kind of a neat day, you know. Uh, many, many 
I, I, I think most religions out there, uh, definitely faith that I follow honors Sunday. Um, other religions honor a different day, but it's neat that almost every faith out there, there we sort of honor one day a week to reset, right? To take a moment to just to just take a deep breath, pause, get out of the craziness of what the week gives us, and reset. So what I what I like about our show title, what I like about what it is, is that I really want us to take this moment to rethink what we're doing. And you know, uh, this week I was having a kind of a tough day at work, uh, like, ha- like, you know, it happens. And I just, as I was plowing through my day or marching through my day is a better way to describe it, grinding through my day, I just kept saying, you know what? Yep. So I'm, I'm in a funk. I'm not sure what it is. Just take the next step. Just what's the next little step? What's the next little thing I need to do? What's the next little thing I need to do? You know, and I didn't, I I, I can look back at that day and say I was still actively, productively moving my family, myself, my business, my staff, my clients towards their goals. I didn't just fart around on email all day. I didn't just, you know, screw around doing Facebook all day. I didn't let myself get sucked into oblivion and, and I just, you know what? Something one of my mentors said, uh, you can cry, you can keep crying, that's okay, but you can cry just effectively as you're marching forward towards your goal. And, you know, that is that is the life that I want to leave behind me where even when it was tough, I continued to grind and push and dig to move forward. I don't want to, you know, I don't want it to get worse. And... So the topic for today, irrevocable trust, is one of these areas where long, you know, early in my career, I was, for maybe the first five years or so, I was very, very shy of dealing with them because they're complicated. But you keep learning and learning and realizing, I got to get better at this. And so I did. I dug in. I've done, I've done the research. I've done the education. I've, and now I'm doing the training, you know, and and been doing them for years now. And this is just one more of those areas where we dig in, we get better, we sharpen our swords so we can help more people. Um, And so, you know, it it is neat to see that Arizona's laws are catching up with the strategies that have been uh, available in other states for a long time. Um, But it does mean that we don't have a lot of case law. We don't have a lot of case law decisions on these issues. And one of them that I do think is going to be a, uh, it's going to become standard practice. I think all of you are going to end up, you know, eventually with this in your living trusts is the strategy of using a trust protector. So we just got a case decision down, um, I think within the last couple months on, uh, that has to do with trust protectors. And it did a really good job of explaining the role of going through the circumstances of what happened in that particular case. That case is still in litigation. So, you know, we may end up with another case decision, which would, you know, is what it is. That's fine. Um, but this was for, this was a couple who put together, a, well, the couple didn't put together a joint trust. It was a late in life marriage and he put together his own trust. And at some point when he was quite elderly, he said to his attorney, I want to go ahead and make this thing irrevocable. I'm getting old. I don't want to, you know, I don't want people messing around with me. Um, I, let's just make it irrevocable. And the attorney recommended great, I think this was great advice, recommended that he include a strategy for a trust protector to be able to make changes if he should want them for the rest of his life, any time. And so he included the option for the trust protector to be able to make changes. And then there was a couple changes that were made by the trust protector. So this case goes through those 
you know, through the process of how those changes were made and the family, there was enough money in the inheritance for the family to fight about it. So they're fighting about it, you know, and the lawyers are arguing the different sides of the case. Um, and you know, I get to be a spectator on it and see what happens. The, the case law that will come out of this though, will help us define and advise our clients better so that we have a little more guidance from the courts on how a trust protector fits. Um, It hasn't been around that long Um, in our statutes. It has been around for a long, long, long time in our common law, in our case law, but only in our statutes for like the last 10 years, 8 or 10 years or so. Um, But anyway, in this particular case, he started out with one set of beneficiaries, you know, to the new wife, to the old wife, to the to the kids, to his separate kids, and then went back in to make a a modification to tweak, you know, the percentages of the splits. Um, And then when he passed away, the family, you know, the different varying members are now hiring lawyers and suing each other for um, for. to, for each of them, obviously, to get more than what the document said. Um, so they're they're in litigation, and we just got the court of appeals decision, and it's still being litigated, and we'll we'll see how it shakes out. What I really like about this court decision is that it honors, right? It completely honors the trust protector strategy itself. It doesn't question that. It doesn't question. You know, the fact that you can use a trust protector to make changes to your trust after it's irrevocable. I love that. I absolutely love that because that is a key strategy for how you can protect your family. You can create an irrevocable trust and it doesn't have to be set in stone. You now have certainty that your trust protector can make those modifications when you want them. All right, so that's kind of the big picture summary of um, of the irrevocable trust strategy on how to make modifications to an irrevocable trust. I hope that's helpful. Go get the article that I put together for this particular topic over at radio.keystonelawfirm.com and just enter your name and email. The system will ship it right to you almost immediately. Um, save the article for later, read it now, give us a call, you know, figure out how this applies to you. Um, I know this applies to people who already have an irrevocable trust, and I suspect it will apply to many of the widows and widowers out there. You might have an irrevocable trust and you might not even know it. We run into that a lot. Um, so if you want to have us review that, that's, you know, we're happy to do that. Just give us a call 480-750-7788. You can call that number now. You can call it obviously later during business hours, but go ahead and get in line um, by calling or sending a text now so that my team can get you on the calendar. 480-750-7788. All right, that is all I've got for today. Uh, It's the start of the day. So now you get to think about and be intentional about what you want to accomplish today. Maybe it's just rest and relaxation. And if it is, I wish you a wonderful day. Have a great day, everybody.